Welcome to Top Crop. Today is August 2nd, 2023. It's finally fungicide time. So we have the airplanes in here today. We actually have two of them here and we're flying all of our corn. Uh, hopefully we're gonna get all of our acres knocked out today. Normally it's something we do a week after 4th of July, but because of mother nature this year, we're way behind and uh, it's just now time to go on August 2nd. So you guys are gonna get to see a bunch of beans and a bunch of corn and a bunch of airplanes today. We're out here in a field where uh, we actually walked earlier this year. So this is the one where me and my dad had the argument about whether to plant or not to plant. And uh, we did 20 acres that we did plant and we decided to shut it down. We just wasn't happy with it. Um, we came back out a little bit later in the year. We walked it and looks like I made the wrong decision. So here we are back again to check out the beans to see where we stand now. So on my left hand is the beans that we planted early in April that I deemed, you know, conditions weren't just correct enough to go ahead and go full bore. It's still too wet, too cold. On the right, as we came back about two and a half weeks later and planted, you can see not too much of a difference when you drive by, but when you hold them up side by side, you'll see the ones that was planted a little bit earlier. They're about a four inch height difference on them. Um, another thing you'll notice, they're about a stage and a half ahead of these that were just planted two and a half weeks behind. Um, they're both looking good. We've both had a lot of good weather for them. We've had a lot of July rains to keep them going. So it's gonna be real interesting to take this to yield and see what we get. All right, so this is probably one of my better bean fields that we're standing in here. Um, they were planted, um, I think May 11th, around that time frame. Okay. Um, but this is really good productive dirt. Um, we tried some different things in the fall burn down. So I uh, just wanted to bring you out here and try to get your opinion of, of what you think we can do to continue to attack this. We just attacked it here at R3. Yeah, so, so Corey, so, I, can, I can tell you you've put some investment in this crop already because you got good pod set. Um, the thing that you've got going on right now, considering this weather, it's been about, you know, it's mid 80s right at the moment, sitting here early first part of August, you have a lot of flowers yet to come, a lot of pods yet to set. So these beans got a whole lot of potential. You know, this, um, you, know, that, you know what I mean by top crop, Corey? Mm -hmm. You know, that, that, that top cluster of plants, uh, of, of pods that we get all excited about in the middle of August and we think there's our next five, six bushel and then all of a sudden Mother Nature does what? She gets hot, she gets dry and all of a sudden stress this plant off and it says, you know what, say what you can, get rid of those, kick those those pods and those blooms off. And you know, you can see this here, I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but we still got some 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 purple flowers coming and a lot of pods that are just starting to set. So what would you recommend going, you know, now that we've already attacked it at R three would this be, you know, a field and, you know, just looking from what we've looked at here, would you be thinking about in like an R5 pass or? So, so Corey, when, when we have yield potential out there and we've got beans that look this good, there is yield yet to be made, right? And preserved on the, on this, this crop. You know, I, I contend that we give up on crops way too early. Um, I think that we make that R3 fungicide pass and then we're tired and, and, and we want to go to the lake, right? We're done mm -hmm. farming for the year until the, until the combine rolls. And I'm telling you, there's money to be made with a, another pass on this. Beans that look like this, that have potential. You've already put the onward max application. So we know that we've dropped stress in this to retain our fruiting sites, our, our pods, our flowers, um, and that the seed set on this plant. So we know we're going to set a lot of seed. As we think about, about filling that out, we need to make sure we've got good K levels in this plant. So I'm a big fan of late season potassium acetate. Potassium acetate is four and a half times more efficient in foliar uptake and utilization by a plant versus any form of foliar potassium on the market. I'm also a fan of, of putting octane with this just one more time at a pint, right? You don't need one to, more time yeah, again. One more time again. Help that translocation of nutrients. You know, pulling it out of this this source, sort the source to sink movement out of this leaf and into this pod to fill it out and we get yield and test weight. So one of the applications that I'm making now is is potassium octane and then also spiking it with an extra little uh, bit of boron. So we have a new product out this year called XR5 KSB, potassium sulfur boron. It is a 4020. It has 5% sulfur and it also has a half percent boron. It's, it's a workhorse um, type product. 
but it is predominantly potassium acetate, and that's going to be a, a one to two quart use rate depending on your K levels in your soil. So if you're a little light on potassium, I'm going to recommend the two quart rate. If you got some adequate potassium, mid to high ranges, I'm probably going to back down to a quart, quart and a half. So, but it is predominantly potassium acetate to fill these pods out. And I've been seeing plus 60, even all the way up to 62 pound test weight on soybeans, True. which is unreal, right? So that's exciting. We all wait. We all wait to the, to the bins and to the elevator. I mean, it always seems like the higher the yield you get, the lower the test weight the beans are. That's right. It's like you make a bigger bean and they weigh less. So, you know, on corn, we always know that 62 pound test weight's that sweet spot That's for right. 350 plus bushel corn. Yeah. Beans, I would love to see what we could do with a big bean that weighed 62 pounds. Yeah. yeah. You uh, know, unloaded with that many pods per node. I mean, you know, I, I'm anxious to see that, you know, if we can pull that off. Extra potassium doesn't create more beans, right? You've already mm -hmm. done that by R5. You've, you've got your beans in there. What it does is fills that pot out. And that's where that yield and test weight comes from. 